like to end up somewhere here, somewhere close to Alaska, either Terrace, where there's a good borscht, and the uh, forecast is looking much better all day. Like rain showers, but you know, broken 4,000, we mm -hmm. can navigate through. Or we will get, we will end up at Stewart, somewhere here. We have plenty of uh, good hotels, and uh, forecast is good. Okay. So let's see. Sounds good. Oh, she wants to go. She wants to go. Did yes, you hear like? Oh, no, let's go. What the? F <laughs> Where have you been the whole night? <laughs> oh, the lady wanna move. That girl is crazy. Maybe made by Russian. Ah, uh, she got so much of my DNA, f***ing all the blood and sweat and everything. Yeah. No tears though. I never, I never cry. Or okay, wow, well, whatever. Get a beer. Go, go home. <laughs> now we we will plug in the uh, the weather station and we'll see if we pick it up. We'll see it should uh, pop up just Wi-Fi and Burning to two straight out Nelson. Can you imagine taking off? <laughs> <laughs> Where to take off? Uh, everything is rolling, cameras? Yep. Okay, wait, uh I go. Welcome back everybody. Sorry it took me so long. I want to give a special thanks to Wayne Schmidt for giving me a kick in the butt to get get me back in front of the computer and do some more editing of all this footage that I got to tell you guys about this trip. Um, without further ado, I'm just going to say watch this. The difference between a seasoned pilot, seasoned pilot in the red and a brand new pilot in the blue, purple, faded shirt, whatever. The concentration on his face versus the joy, the joy on mine when we lift off. See the power line over there? Yes. And it's a trap. You cannot go under. You see another one? Another yeah. One? Looks like two or three. Two or three of them, and they are lower and lower. That's definitely a trap to catch the Russians. <laughs> No, she just stable. You see? Yeah. Where we put her, where we ask her to stay, 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 stay. Okay. Oh, she loves it. It's like your Sadie. Uh, Sadie. <laughs> How you pronounce correctly? Sadie. Sadie. It's like your Sadie. That damn looks cool. Yes. Oh, there are some birds. Uh, keep scanning the skies. I mean. Okay. I just saw one. Okay, birds. birds. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good, good scan. It, it's no factor. No worries. I know. It's just you know we saw them, so keep keep looking. Now yep. They know how they look. Yep. So camera probably caught them as well. Yeah. I just called them out as soon as I saw them. That was yep, all. Yep. Yep. They might be here as well. Man, look at this. This is this is the canal. What an infrastructure. Oh wow. Wow, look at that, man. Yeah, we go around that mountain and uh, actually we can sneak through this. Yeah, through here. Okay. That's a little, a little shortcut. That's what it is all about. This is amazing. It's so weird flying below the terrain like this. Just not used to it, you know? Yes, yes. That pretty much will be uh, all our way to Alaska like this. Okay. Departing Nelson, we had beautiful blue skies, and it was just a perfect day to fly. But the further north we got, the more things deteriorated, as you heard in the opening segment where he was talking about the scattered showers at 4,000 feet. But that's just 
what you have to deal with when you're traveling long distances on a trip like this. Hang in there with us for a few more minutes and see what we went through. I uh, started the tracking here. We will see if it works. Okay. So, uh, I might have a a, uh, a message. Yes, that was actually sleet you heard hitting the canopy. And this was my initiation to a term called scud running. This section of the trip got a little weird for me because again, as I've told you multiple times, I'm a new pilot and I'm not used to dealing with any kind of weather. I usually try to fly on just a beautiful day because I'm worried about learning to operate the airplane and uh, I'm not used to dealing with weather at all. So this was an interesting little section. Um, you know, the visibility was good enough that I wasn't concerned at all. I knew I was with a very skilled aviator, and uh, I wasn't concerned about that, but it was bouncy enough, and the tail got wiggle waggle and back and forth as if he was kicking the rudders back and forth that I started to get a little air sick. Um, there was a couple times I kind of had to keep my eyes on the horizon, take a couple deep breaths and keep swallowing just to keep everything calm. But not once did I feel uncomfortable you know, oh my god, we're gonna die. There was nothing like that. It was just... Eh, different. That's all I can say, is it was different.
whole day of bouncing around, dodging weather, and getting a little queasy here and there, I was just absolutely unprepared for what I was about to experience. The terrain changed a little, the mountains got taller, the scenery got more beautiful, the sky got blue, and this was, what you're about to see is one of the most memorable experiences of my life. As we entered this valley to get to Stewart, the sheer beauty and just, it was unreal to see everything that I was about to see. And it's, it's one of those moments I'll never forget for the rest of my life. It's blowing from there. Okay. A good 30 knots on the nose. So we'll stay in the middle. Maybe a little bouncy, but nothing to worry about. Yeah, this glacier I was talking to you about. This is unreal. It is. It did. It's a very tight spot to turn around. I was gonna, yeah. Yeah, you can't turn around. You start climbing this way, you drop the nose like hammerhead. Right. Well, that's gonna be the end of this episode for now. Um, I'm going to leave you hanging. At the end of that canyon up ahead, behind those clouds, there's a runway. And it made for the hairiest landing I've ever experienced. So do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button. Because when you like it, it helps me get the, my message out. And when you subscribe, that means you get to see the next episode. We haven't made it to Alaska yet. <laughs>